In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to get this probe here to land on the moon. This will wrap up my tutorials for this week, and it's back to the For All Kerbal Kind grind after this, but more will be coming, so make sure you hit that subscribe button to be notified when they release. I'll be breaking this mission down rather than building from scratch, as in previous tutorials I've already covered a lot of the basics that went into this design. Starting with the lander itself, a procedural probe core set to early interplanetary deep space avionics with a controllable mass of 0.25 tonnes and no internal antenna present. As we're going to the moon, we need deep space to control this final descent stage. I filled the probe with short-term experiments to get some science gain on the surface. The only surface experiment I'm missing is the magnetometer, but that is incredibly heavy and power hungry, and takes 30 days to complete. Not worth it with the current tech in my opinion. Make sure experiments you add are able to be performed on the surface though, as many are only specific to space. You can see the biomes an experiment can be run from, either on the Kerbalism Science Info screen, or from the description of the experiments on the Configure Experiments window. The rest of the probe core is filled up to capacity with electric charge, giving me 6,283, which will be enough to transmit all the science gained. And with hibernation mode and solar panels attached to the side can make this probe last a very long time. A Communitron 16 on top provides adequate comms and for the final descent of this probe, two 550-890 radial RCS engines are mounted on the sides, set to HTP with a couple of isogrid high pressure tanks on the bottom for fuel. Attitude is controlled by four small RCS thrusters, also configured to HTP, and power is generated by four solar panels. This completes the lander and gives me 359 meters per second of delta V. Nowhere near enough to land on the moon by itself, but this stage will only perform the last little bit of the descent. Next underneath, the main braking stage. One small procedural decoupler is mounted underneath the lander, set to make it as light as possible. I use the hollow fillet cylinder shape to do this. Below the decoupler, a cylindrical isogrid high pressure tank with dimensions of 1 meter by 64 centimeters to contain the fuel for a Juno 46k engine. This tank fully fueled will give 2,525 meters per second of delta V, which should be enough to stop us dead in our tracks at the moon. There are no extra avionics on this stage, they're just too heavy. We're going to be performing forming our braking burn unguided. Next we get the TLI stage, and also our final ascent stage, a 1RL10 Centaur using the basic RL10A1 config. I did want to try and make this without resorting to the RL10, but I couldn't come up with a design under 150 tons that got away without using hydrologs. If you do have any, please feel free to share them. This stage uses near-earth avionics set to 15 tons and some RCS pods to control the spacecraft's orientation. Underneath, the same atlas from my PVG tutorial earlier this week, it's a workhorse and you'll get a lot of use out of it. If you haven't seen it, check that video out for how it's made. And that completes the lunar landing stack. Sub 150 tons, it's not bad, but I think I'm going to have a bit of a play around with some different designs to see if I can make something a little cheaper and more tech friendly. This craft is already available on Patreon, so go check it out if you want to grab this. Now to the launch. I set the moon as my target and use MechJeb Ascent Guidance to launch into the target plane. If you're launching from higher inclinations than the cape, you want to be launching to the longitudinal ascending node where your apogee once TLI has been performed will intersect with the ascending node or descending node of your orbit compared to the moon. Lots of big words there, but there is a KOS script from It's Ryan that I use that you can find on the Realism Overhaul Discord that will give you the LAN to launch to from your inclination. Link to that Discord as well as my own server will be in the description. This rocket is the most expensive I've made this week at nearly 7,000 funds. However, this contract is very lucrative, so you should more than make your money back by completing it. The Atlas Centaur is plenty capable of getting to low Earth orbit and is actually over-engineered, as after completing TLI, I'll have around 700 meters per second left in the Centaur stage. Translunar injection is plotted out and performed using one of the many ignitions on the RL-10 engine. For this maneuver, as was the case with lunar impactors, we want to set a course that takes us straight to the moon. No flyby for this mission. Once the burn is complete and I'm happy with the spacecraft's trajectory, I plot out a maneuver at the moon while still at Earth to use all the fuel in the Juno stage, burning nothing but retro. This is for the same reason I did this in my previous video. I want to know where to point the spacecraft when I get to the moon, whilst I still have control over it around Earth. This may take some finagling to get just right, as any movement around Earth can drastically change your lunar encounter, but once I'm happy with the results, I spin up the entire craft to maintain attitude and release the lander from the Centaur. Now we're on the way to the moon and should maintain our direction pointed at the node thanks to spin stabilization. In previous versions of RP-1, you could maybe have kept the Centaur stage on during this journey and used some of the RL-10 to break at the moon. However, with the changes to multi-layer insulation being unlocked later in the tech tree, that stuff that magically stops your fuel from boiling off, by the time you arrive at the moon, there won't be any hydrologs left in that stage. Upon arriving at the moon, I check MechJeb's landing info screen to decide when I want to start the burn with the Juno 46k. Too early, and we'll kill our spacecraft's velocity too high from the surface, and not have enough delta V in the final lander to softly touch down. And too late? Well, this just becomes a more expensive lunar impactor. With this design, I found after numerous tests that when MechJeb's landing info says minus six seconds to start your suicide burn, that was the perfect time. Two to three seconds later, and you'll crash. And a few seconds before, you won't have enough to land. This is such a tight window, and is honestly pretty terrifying. Using the RCS on the lander to ullage, I burn the Juno until the spacecraft comes 
comes to an almost complete stop. Being unguided, I can't quite get this down to zero meters per second, but I'm happy with where I ended up. I then decouple the lander, finally gain control, and use the two small RCS engines to softly touch down upon the surface of the moon. And that's how to land a small probe relatively efficiently on the lunar surface. That will conclude the tutorials for this week. I do plan on making more, but for now I need to get back to working on my next episode of For All Kerbal Kind, which hopefully, schedule permitting, should be coming out next weekend. I'd like to thank Winterfox and the rest of my members and patrons for their continued support. I have been Karnassa, and I will see you later.